Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Always Moving Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Lyndon Savanto, and thank you for listening. Uh, this is my first episode in a little while here, and I have to gotta say thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, several people reached out to me, asked when the next episode was going to be, and honestly, I was away, and I got busy, and more honestly, I got a little lazy. <laughs> But I'm back. I had planned this episode actually a couple days ago, but only got until now to actually record it. So, hey, here we are. And if people are asking, hey, when's the next episode going to be? It must not be as bad as my parents say it is. So much appreciated to everyone listening, everyone abroad. Um, I hope you're doing well. We're getting closer and closer to Christmas and winter. Here in Alberta, it is, it's been snowing, it's been cold, it's got, it's getting to that stage where I have to warm up my car a little bit before I go to work, so, you know, that's a, that's a joy. <laughs> um, with the COVID summer and everything, it seems like it went by rather quickly because uh, you couldn't really do anything extra large. You know, that big summer plans. I had a great summer, though, but it wasn't like I wasn't going to Europe or what have you. Going to the nightclub and talking to people, <laughs> which I don't do anyway. Um, but yeah, it seems almost just like yesterday that it, uh, it was snowy and cold and looks like uh, we might be in this to stay. So I hope you're doing well. Stay warm course drive safe if you're gonna get winter tires which i suggest probably get them done soon because that's just gonna pick up uh it's gonna get real busy over there um the th now that we're kind of transitioning to a new season and life kind of continues on and summer ends and winter's here autumn doesn't really exist here <laughs> summer ends and winter's here it's just the changing of the season, changing of the colors, temperature, and it got me thinking about life kind of in a way and how it changes. And as much as things change, they're, they stay the same, as you've probably read in a magazine somewhere, probably at the uh, dentist office. Um, so I was thinking there's an... I've, as you've probably heard, or if you know me, I've lived abroad for years, and now I've been back for a little bit. And I think there's this misconception of, while I'm living abroad, not just myself, but my friends that have lived abroad, or anyone I've met who's done it, I think the people back home have a misconception about how, how things work, how things go down. And that it's all just, oh, you're in France or you're in Australia, every day's peachy, you know, you're on vacation every single day, which is not true. Like every, t I was talking to my friend Greg about this the other day. And when you go to these countries and you live there for a year or two years or three years or whatever it is, you go there and you, you create a new life. You create new friends. You basically become family. You depending if you're a student or an athlete or you're working, you find a routine and you you live a whole new life. It's that starting over. And I thought about this recently because you know, some stuff has gone down with the national team, with handball and with winter coming and just all this kind of changes. So it got me thinking about what it feels like to leave these countries after spending a year more in them. And it's not easy. It never gets easier. People might think, you know, oh, like the first time must have been the hardest. And then the more you do it, the easier it gets. It's, it's never easy. Everywhere I've been, I've made new friends and new family. And at the end of the day, you're, you'll never know if you're going to see them again. So when you're, when you're packing your bag or you're in that last, the last like month, couple weeks, it really starts to hit like, shit, I'm running out of time. 
Like when you know, when you have your ticket booked and you're like, this thing's coming to an end. Like I got to absorb all of it. And that's my suggestion to, for anyone that's going to go somewhere or play a sport somewhere or study or what have you just appreciate every moment because it's never going to be the same. Um, Even if you leave, it's going to be different. You might say, no, no, me and this group of friends are super close. Like we're family for life. And it's true. I have great friends and people I consider family that live abroad, but you don't talk to them as frequently. You might see them once every five years, every two years, whatever. And a big suggestion I want to give people is if you're in this situation that I was in or Greg found himself in or Daryl or wh- whoever, if you're over there, just live every moment and don't, especially don't let the little shit take away from the magic and the opportunity that you have. When I first left Denmark, so I was in Denmark for three semesters at uh, a sports academy and folk high school which were some of the craziest most amazing years of my life and the people i met there were incredible shout out to gabby you're my uh you're my only listener right now in great britain so gabby i hope you listen to this one shout out to you um it was an incredible time you you live with all these students from around the world you learn different cultures the way the way they interact the histories of how they ended up in the exact same place as you and how it seemed like fate brought you together that you can meet people that you you get so close with so the first semester i went it was i was there january till may and i left before the semester end and so i knew i was going to come back in the fall i was going back to the same school so in the when i got home i left in may i get home and the very next day i wake up in my old bed in my old room with all my old stuff around and I wake up and it felt like, like that didn't happen. It was four or five months. It just blew by, absolutely blew by. And I had, I, I opened my laptop. I'm like, what the hell? Like this didn't happen. I hope my laptop, there's all these pictures and I knew all these people and I knew their names and I had stories between us. But it went like, it was insane how quick it blew by. So I told myself, like, next time, like, get in the zone and appreciate every moment. And when I went back for my second and third semester, it was glorious. I, uh, I did everything. I The first semester, if I said no to something, this time I'm like, no, I'll do it. I'm going to take drama class. I'm going to perform. I'm going to sing at the concerts because they do like these talent shows. So I'd sing at the concerts and they usually went over pretty well. People enjoyed them. I, um, maybe they just like laughing at me, but we did all kinds of stuff. Like we had a, a wedding party where I was the bride and everyone had different roles in the wedding. And Dushin was the, the groom and the people that, organized this party like got it all together it was crazy they had invitations they had everyone had roles we had our mom and dads were students you had your wedding party picked out and it felt so real so in so this third semester we're doing this and then it gets to that last couple weeks and you're like shit like i know this feeling i know what's gonna happen and you just try to soak it up at the at the end of every day or the end of every interaction or face-to-face meeting with somebody. You just like, you know, this could be one of the last times we share this. So I really took it in. And then we had at the, at the uh, academy, we had like assemblies every week. And um, normally they would they'd tell the news or we would talk or this is going on or they'd have to bring up something like we never cleaned up well enough after the the school party or whatnot. But it was my last, it was my last assembly at the school and I'd never seen it in any of the time there, but the whole assembly felt felt and was basically dedicated to me. And it, 
hit like a sack of bricks. Um, the the headmaster of the school, he said so many nice things about me and how important I was to kind of the fabric of the school. And uh, then one of the other students, Martin, requested a, one of the songs was You've Got a Friend. And he dedicated it to me. And like the absolute second the song started playing, I'm just, I can't even breathe. I'm just bawling. And it just hit, it like hit so hard. And I think I was leaving like the next day or something. So, so I'm hugging everybody and we're just like, oh, you know, thanks for this. Like it was amazing, whatever. And then I was still just, I'm built like a, like an oxen, just strong as hell. <laughs> But I was just weak at this moment. And one of the teachers, Inga, told me, and I, I, it, it sticks with me every day. She said, it hurt so much because it meant something. And that's 100% true. And in every country I've lived in, every city I've lived in, when I'm saying goodbye to people and it hurts, I remember this quote comes to me every time. And it's, it hurts so much because it meant something. And it truly did. It, um, my time at the academy there it gave me confidence. It let me be myself. It let me learn more about myself. This was one of the first times ever I was living on my own for an extended period. And yeah, it was that that uh, that goodbye from Iho the first or the after the third semester, and I knew I wasn't coming back the next time. And uh, that one hit. It still hits. Like thinking about it now, I have a in my bedroom. I have a homemade collage of pictures of everyone from there, and yeah, I, it was a, it was an incredible experience. And what Inga told me is uh, sticks with me, and it's, I hope it sticks with you. And I think anyone who's who's gone through it and who knows this feeling, I think they can attest to it. It's it's true. It's one hundred percent true. It hurts so much because it meant something. And that was, it was the same in Denmark. And when I went to France to, uh, I moved to France at the university and playing handball there. And, and like, that was such a crazy experience too, because I learned so much in my time there with, uh, with the team and with my friends at the university, my girlfriend at the time had my own apartment. And there's so much stuff about life you learn that I was learning kind of for the first time because the academy you would eat in the cafeteria with all the students and stuff and the meals were prepared. But, but here I was learning all this stuff on my own and I learned how to be poor. And this is something I would like to talk about in another episode, but I learned how to like be actually poor. Um, people are like, Oh, I have no money. I can't go out. But like poor, poor, I learned how to, be happy without anything and find ways to get by and, and be resourceful. And I happen to find some, a blessing out of absolutely nowhere. Save me. I'm going to save this for another episode, but, but it, at complete random, I got saved in uh, time of need, but yeah. So in France, in Poitiers, it was, you know, it was the first time living in my own, exact apartment, buy my own groceries, study at the university, play handball at night. And then when I was leaving there, it was Inga's words just, they rang, they rang through my head again. It was, um, we had our last game with the guys after I was with this team for two years. And it was my last game. We're in the locker room after the game. And I don't even know. I don't even know if we won or lost that game. If I'm honest with you, I don't know what happened in that game. All I remember is sitting in the locker room at the end, and you know the guys are walking around naked, and guys are cracking open beers as we always do after the games in France. And I just kind of look around, and then I just start tearing up, and it it just hit. It was I, I could care less about the the material things maybe I was missing or what it was it was I was saying goodbye to my family and my friends and having been through it before I knew it wasn't going to be the same I wasn't going to I I visited Poitiers since then I've seen the guys but it wasn't that that brotherhood 
that we live through, that we train through, that we just guys are throwing up because we're training so damn hard to get ready for the season. And I'm in the locker room and it's just the guys all, they hug me and the last home, this was our, the last game of the year was the one I was just talking about. Uh, we were away, so we didn't have the home crowd and stuff, but I was just in the locker room and like, you know, that that's what I miss. And I still miss it. I could picture it all right now. All the naked guys drinking beer, walking around. <laughs> um, that one, that was also tough and it was, it's never easy. And um, the last, the game before, before I left Poitiers, the one that we played in Poitiers, um, normally we would walk out in the game and we'd hold like a child's hand from like the, the really young teams and they'd walk out with the players and normally you come out in numerical order. But this was my last home game and they they changed the, the order. I'm like, okay, this, 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 and then they just didn't say my name. And then the guys after me in the, in the line, they all go, they all go, and then there was like a pause. And then they say... Uh, Lyndon Savanto and I come running out and I get the standing ovation from the crowd and my coach and the president and the vice president and sponsors of the club, they're all there and they give me two jerseys from the club. They have a huge printed out poster of the team photo, which is literally hanging right above me as I record this. And it was such a special feeling. And people were getting photos with me and we go and go and go. And then the game came to an end and I just, I went around, I hugged everybody. I took a French flag, which is hanging by my bed. And I got as many people as I could to sign it because, you know, that was, that was an end of an era. That was an end of my life in Poitiers. And I don't think people really realize how difficult it is to, First, to move to a new place that people you don't know, but move away from a place of people that you you've gotten so close to, or that you've you've developed something beyond language, beyond backgrounds, or whatever. It was. It's incredibly difficult to do it, but it's something I've done several times, and I'll probably do again, because the connections you make are. It meant it, it's so hard because it means something. It's the same thing when I do when I'm saying goodbye to people as the same thing I do when I'm traveling. I've been to Paris. I don't know how many times in my life I've been to Paris. I've been to Paris days and days and days, like months of just time visiting there, you could camps or visit or tourists or whatever. And I've been to Paris so many times. And every time I ever went to Paris, ever, I went and saw the Eiffel Tower. I went and saw Notre Dame. I went and saw the Louvre. I saw all the, the major landmarks you have to see because you never know if you're going to get back there to see it. And I did this in La Boca, in Argentina, in Rome. You do it in Australia. You never know if you're going to be back to these places. The same as the people. You absorb as much as you can from the people when you say goodbye is the same when you leave a city and Paris, for example, the Notre Dame burned down. And every time I ever went to Paris, I went to Notre Dame because I was never sure that that would be the last time I ever saw it. And that's one of the few cases that it will never be the exact same as every time I've ever seen it. And I'm, that's one of those, I don't regret it at all. Like that's something I, I would never regret because I went back and I saw it every time and uh, people would be like, Oh, it's just the building, whatever. But the building represented so much because of how I've been living in France and I, how I'd go every time I'd see it. And then when it was on fire, it really struck a chord with me because sure. Like people were upset because, Oh, it's a, historic landmark it's a, i've never seen it in my life i want to see it but for me it meant a lot because when i first arrived in france i was in paris i went and saw it i went to france in 2007 for the first time and my brother was there 
um, with me on a handball trip. It was, one, it was the only time I went uh, internationally with my brother on a handball tournament. And we went to Notre Dame together. And then I went with friends from Quebec who started playing in France in handball. And we went there together. So it was more than a building. So when I, when I saw it on fire and stuff, it was just... I, I was just happy that I, I saw it as many times as I could. And that's something I I really want to stress is if you're living in Denmark right now or you're living anywhere, you're studying anywhere, just breathe it in. Soak it in. Take the time to breathe it in. Put your damn phone down and, and soak it in. Don't put your phone down if you listen to this, but in any other case, um, just soak it in. Au okay. Where I was in France last year, it was the same thing. The the port I went and you hug every early after the game. You get pictures with everybody. Australia was the same thing. Um, the last handball practice I had with the guys in Australia, um, we just hung out and just it was. I love these guys. I still love these guys. And Melbourne and uh, Sydney when I went, you see the harbor and Melbourne was tough because. It was a, the that night I was saying goodbye to some people and I wasn't sure I'd ever see them again. And I've still yet to see them. But I'm glad we set it up to to see each other. And it was right in front of the Melbourne train station, like one of the iconic locations in Melbourne to, to visit Flinders Street. And it was like, you know what? I've seen uh, these people every day this week. I saw them every day that week and I'm glad I did because to this day I've, I've yet to see them again we talk and whatnot but that end of an era that end of a time that end of a life that you built in this spot it never gets easier so my hope is that there's more I can continue I can continue with the same with teams Team Canada or Team Alberta, any sport team, you, odds are you're not going to be the exact same team the next year. You're not going to have the exact same players, same coaches, what whatnot. So, all I'm I'm hoping what you can get from this podcast is maybe a new appreciation of every day where you wherever you are or the people you see, because you never know when it's going to change. It could change like that. You never know when you wake up in your bed after living in Denmark, you wake up in your bed by yourself with no noise and no one around you. And you weren't even sure it happened because it was something so incredibly extraordinary. Um, just appreciate life for what it is. Because uh, you just never know. And that's one thing I've learned so much from my travel. And I think that's one thing I hope people understand from what I've been doing living abroad and traveling is that it's not all just Instagram photos and smiles. It's a, uh, it's hard and you clean up your apartments and you sell all your stuff and you go for one last beer with the guys or you hug your professor and thank them for everything they did for you. When, um, one of the hardest goodbyes, when I left Poitiers was my coach Christian because he had taken me back to my apartment the day before I left. And I, uh, I, I did a five page, you had to do a five topic report for the university and you write it on French and it's about things you learn about France and you compare them to your home, your home country. And you, you make comparison between the two and then you kind of say, what did you learn? And, kind of like uh, lessons from there. So if you listen to my last episode, Christian took me to the university and we, uh, I didn't speak any French. And he was the guy I saw like the first time. And then when I was leaving Poitiers, he was the guy that I saw the last time there. And it felt there was something that felt good. Like I did it and I did it all was when I, I handed him a copy of the five topic. It was like 20 pages or something written all in French. And I felt like 
it was so much more than just some report and uh, it was a it was a thank you to him but it was an appreciation of everything he gave me and i think a confirmation that when if he read it and he sees it i don't know if he still has it i hope he still does um but a confirmation that what he did changed my life and that uh, we'll always be family so yeah this one was a bit heavy and it was like they're talking through this episode there's a lot of stuff going through and a lot of feelings and i i hope maybe it brought up well not if they're real painful but i hope it brought up uh some stuff when you were traveling and maybe if you have an upcoming trip or a big life decision like if you're about to get married or you're about to have a kid or you're about to graduate or you're about to start a new job just take a second and look at this moment in time right now because it's not going to be the same the next day and just kind of breathe take a pause for 10 seconds and look around because it's all going to it will change but at the end of the day it'll all be the same so that's that's what i hope uh you take from this one i appreciate you guys listening to me as always this has been the always moving podcast i'm your host Lyndon savanto and if i could just say it one more time from inga with something i think there might be my first tattoo that i get but um It hurts so much because it meant something. Just kind of reflect on that. It hurts so much because it meant something. Thank you for listening. If you made it here, I believe this is my longest episode. As always, take care of yourself. Take care of the ones around you. Be safe out there. Start your car before you start driving if you're in the area and it's cold. I've been your host, Lyndon Savanto. This is the Always Moving Podcast. And let's keep this thing moving.